Hi everyone. I wanted to create a long video, but I can't do that. So this is going to be a short video. It's going to be a lot of information in the short video. I'm going to speak about 5G. I'm going to give a couple of short snippets from videos speaking about supporting why I feel overkill of technology, and that includes 5G, will do harm to the people. Um, oh gosh. I discuss for a moment why I, I, 5G is linked to the future, and it's all about autonomous driving technology and connecting the world globally. I also speak about the governor of New York for a moment. I also speak, I give a couple of shout outs and show a couple of clip, clips from videos um, speaking about overkill of technology and what antennas do and how I happen to feel, believe that they do cause harm if they're not regulated, if they're not controlled. They're going overkill because they, they want to make everything globally connected. There's so much going on, guys. A little bit about unemployment. So stay tuned. I'm going to give you pictures. I'm going to show you pictures. Go down the row and go down the list. And after this, I'm going to go live. Stay tuned. Because I really do feel overkill of um, antennas that hold overkill of high frequency and wavelengths, ultraviolet radiation. It rips away electrons from atoms, atoms. I really do believe the future generations are going to start living shorter lives, but live in a very high tech world. 5G is coming into play. I drove around my town today. I took pictures. I'll show you in a moment how, they're, how they are being installed in my area all throughout Long Island, New York. I'll show you a map too. Autonomous cars will become a reality, but it won't happen until 5G data networks are ubiquitous. Now, I had to look that up. I'm not ashamed to say that. Um, let me see if it'll... Ubiquitous. Ubiquitous. Existing or being everywhere. I understood that before I knew the word. Especially at the same time. <clears throat> if they, they want to put small cell towers everywhere. Because they're looking for latency because the high frequency wavelengths get easily blocked. So they're keeping them really low to the ground, not really high. It's not like a um, 4G tower where it's out in a boonie someplace and nobody's living around and you have, you know, it covers a lot of land. Um, they have to have it almost on every corner for autonomous cars to work and to make this world globally connected. Here's a map, 5G small antenna map, and after doing research, I'm going to see if this works here. This is Long Island. See how long it is? It's not out here yet, but I live right around here. I'm going to move this map a little bit. If it lets me while I'm recording, please hang in there. I'm going to enlarge it. If it enlarges, come on, baby. I'm going to give it a moment to catch up. Ah, oh, okay. Sorry, it's a little delayed only because I'm recording. Let me move it over. This is my town here. Right here. My town! One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And I saw them all. You see, there's certain clusters, there's a lot of them. These red ones up here, I don't want to keep moving the map because, you know, maybe I'll move it one more time. I'll shift it over. Look how many in that area. Huntington area is like killer. Just over Plainview, Syosset, East Northport, Greenlawn, if you're familiar. The red areas, if you click on that, it's two 
cellular, cellular phone are sharing the antenna. It carries um, Sprint and Verizon for now. Let me go back here. This is what it looks like. Okay, this one looks bright. I don't want to take a picture of everything. There we go. Because it would have just taken me too long. You see that? You see a brown box right there. A brown box. And all the wires are all new. While they were telling us to go inside, these weren't up here a month ago. <laughs> no way. No way. And this is a front of a school. I live right down the block from this. This is an elementary school. It's right across the street. And on the other side are homes. Um, there's the antenna on top. I'll move my cursor. You see that on top? It's a brown box. It goes up a fresh new wiring. And the antenna's on top. They are mini, they are small cell antennas. And they're all over the place. That's what they're doing here in my area. Because if they start going autonomous, and it's a lot closer than you think. I know us gig workers laughed about it a couple of years ago, chuckled it off like that's a long time away. Uh-uh. I have a feeling by the time 2000, I say, 27, you're going to see them zipping all over the place. It's a lot closer than you think. I'll show you one more. That's what it looks like. This, I, took a, I took a handful of pictures, but that's what it looks like, guys. So angry about it. Because now, just think about all of those. I, there's one right down the block from my apartment. There's one right across the street. I'm already surrounded by it. Now, I know this might sound silly. I, I mentioned this Taco Bell so many times. This should have been open two months ago. But with this forced pause, that's one less gig job I have. I was so excited, if you follow me, that they were open, opening up a Taco Bell down the street. Because I was like, wow, I could get a lot of local orders. And Uber Eats is now doing Taco Bell in my area. On top of Grubhub. On top of DoorDash. Okay, here's a video clip. This is our governor. And um, I've supported him from the start. This was uploaded May 5th. Just listen to what he says in his intro to him about speaking, you know, publicly. Masks up. Good morning. That's supposed to be a joke? I don't find that humorous. And all these people, I've supported them from the start. Um, that was in bad taste, considering the seriousness of this forced close down and destroying the economy. Listen to what he's saying right now. Uh, so maybe I just haven't been persuasive or effective enough in my communication skills. So. I said to Mariah, great idea. We'll ask New Yorkers, produce an ad, 30 second ad. They submit it. Uh, Mariah's going to be an unofficial advisor with the Department of Health. Pick the five best, put them online, let New Yorkers pick the best ad. State will run that ad. It'll say on the bottom, produced by whoever won the competition. They'll get a lot of acclaim. They'll go on to be big creative uh, experts, uh, and maybe we'll have an ad that, uh, that communicates this better than I have been able to communicate it uh, to date. So I'm he communicated it enough. Uh, what are we in second grade? What is this, like a little competition among elementary um, students? I, I just, I can't believe this is happening. Are you serious? I'm not pro masks. I will be considerate when I go shopping. I, my life has changed to the point where I am limiting myself from things that I used to do. And I will support in certain situations. But to go on national television and tell me that you haven't done your job right to get, his, get your point across. And now we have to have like this elementary school type competition 
of someone's going to be a winner and create this wonderful, I don't know, um, gimmick. I, I, I'm losing the word, like gimmick, like a jingle. Are you, are you for real? I have better things to do with my time than worrying about if uh, uh, taking time out of my life to put together a jingle about wearing masks. I don't support masks on healthy people, but I will wear them when I go into an enclosed store. But you see me walking down the street, you won't be seeing me wearing a mask. I'm not doing it. Then don't come near me. That's how I feel. As long as I'm practicing social distancing, which I feel is a bit overkill, because I really do feel a lot of this, I, I feel this is, uh, you'll understand, I feel this was predicted, this wasn't a shocker, this is an all a conspiracy to break down the economy and create a new world. And when I saw Donald Trump years ago signing the New World Order, I said, that man doesn't want to sign it. Whether I voted for him or not, I felt that way then. I've shown this before. The next outbreak will look like this. Well, how the hell did you know that in 2015? And then they're, they're mimicking exactly what this so-called, I mean, this man claims, he's telling his audience, he's telling the world, this is what a pandemic's going to look like. Get ready. How does he know? Today, the greatest risk of global catastrophe doesn't look like this. Instead, it looks like this. If anything kills over 10 million people in the next few decades, it's most likely to be a highly infectious virus rather than a war. Not missile. You believe that shit? You see on the bottom there, influenza virus. How did you know that in 2015? I, I'm, I, the more I learn, the more angry I get. Now I'm going to show you just a f couple of minutes from a few videos, just supporting what this video is about, keeping you updated, and there's a lot of people taking notice what's going on. We're starting our investigation in Boron. Population 2300. It's a desert town on the southeast corner of Kern County. It's not the big city. We don't have the stresses, the crime rate. We don't have the gangs. We don't have... It's a nice place to raise your kids. Earlier this month, a Verizon 5G cell tower was put up about 1,000 feet from the high school. Everybody's kids either have gone to the school, go to the school, or play football in our community. So what is 5G? Right now, if you were to download a, like a two-hour movie, it would take maybe a few minutes with the 5G technology in place, it'd be less than 20 seconds. What do you say to those people who say, we don't need 5G, 4G is enough? The future's here. I mean, it's not only for our viewing pleasure and movies and things like that, but we start thinking about other technologies like uh, autonomous driving. In short, 5G has 100 times the capacity as 4G, explains Nick Points, an expert in wireless technology at ARC in Bakersfield. As far as I'm concerned, that's why we don't live in a big city. We don't need that. The little fields fear the high school's proximity to the cell tower could increase the risk of cancer for kids in the community, look at him, look at him. including their seven-year-old, Jacob. There's other locations that you can put those towers. They can't put it, yeah, where there's I mean, nobody. Or put it up higher. Some may call their concerns extremist, but the little fields are not alone. One here at the equestrian. In April, AT&T proposed seven cell towers into Hatchapi. So this is our backyard view. Mm -hmm. One would stand and about a hundred feet from the Bentley's window in Bear Valley Springs. Dozens of residents have teamed up in opposition. Did those large towers have to be placed right next to a school? They're right. Did, did they have to place that 5G tower right in someone's backyard? in an area like that when it's all open land? What's that supposed to be? I, I, I don't understand. And they're right. They have all that land. Why do they have to choose to put one right next to a school? I mean, this, this just sounds like somebody's out to kill everyone globally. It's just ridiculous. These people are right. 
23,000 people in this little area. Let's target them. I just don't get it. I'm going to play a minute or so of this. Just listen to what they have to say. I'll include all of these links in the description below, guys. But just this little snippet part. They're speaking about they left the big city, I think Las Vegas. They got away from all the towers. They weren't feeling well. And they went back home because they felt they were surrounded by too much radiation from the towers. It's not safe. Yeah. Trying to fall back asleep and... Tanner's mom feels she doesn't have the dizziness anymore. And even, I will say, once we left uh, the, the Vegas there, the big city there, and we were still traveling around, all of us still had uh, little, like, bursts of the dizziness. Especially your mom, she would get it here and there. And last four months, nothing's happened. You know, both of us... Uh, our memory's better, sleep's better. I know a big one for both of us, I would say, is there was a feeling like a mood swing of aggression a lot when we were around the tower, and that was one of the big indicators. They said, uh, when you're so close to it, that can be something that can happen. And some people thought, oh, it's all in your head. You just, you know, yeah. it's not real. Like, yeah. it's just, it's, you're being kind of like a hypochondriac here and yeah. just and thinking you're creating the symptoms yeah. from your mind, but I really... When all no, three of us I, had I don't it. think yeah. that we really were. No, and we because we didn't talk about it, especially we didn't tell Kendra's mom anything about it, how we were feeling, or anything about these cell towers. And when she came to us saying, hey guys, I'm getting dizzy all the time, I've been sick, do you guys, what, what is that? And then we were like, oh my gosh, this is actually something here, you know? And I mean, there's countless other videos, I've seen blogs where people talk about how they were sick, from the cell towers. I'm gonna, hang on, I'm gonna go this way. It's just, it's better. And, uh, you know, I mean, I've even seen, there's been uh, an incident at a school. Oh, again, I can even link that video down below. A news, uh, you know, one of the news stations covered where the school in California, they took down a Sprint cell tower because there was a few kids at the school that had gotten cancer, you know? And stuff like that, that's where it really starts to piss me off, you know? This guy is very well known. He's InfoWars, and London Real was interviewing him. And this is just a little snippet of a few things he shares. You need to get the studies, folks, to get informed and go to the city council, go to the local government, have them ban it. That's where we're having success. And file lawsuits and schools that have them next to them have had huge cancer clusters they're having them removed from towns everywhere and so i really think that's the best response if i was the 5g folks i would burn down some of my own towers so we would be the victims no we need to politically and culturally and with information burn them down by exposing what they're doing but regardless they misrepresented a couple weeks ago with david ike on your show he was simply pointing out that 5g is connected to lowering immunity and then all the places where you see the worst outbreaks are where the 5G are. Well, that's where you've got all of people close together and people all not in natural environments. And all of that adds together. But even if David Icke was wrong, and I believe he was right, don't we as adults have a right to hear what he said? But oh, now because some cell towers got burned down, now we can't hear David Icke, even though he didn't say burn down cell towers. So again, that's that misrepresentation of what's going on. I will share all of these links in the description below. Okay, I'm going to upload the video and then I'm going to go live. There is so much going on in the world. If this is the way I can help spread the word and follow their suggestions, I'm going to do it. Last week I tried to apply for traditional unemployment and I just didn't share this. It, it just was glitchy all over the place and it made me feel like a dummy. So I did it at my mother's house and I said, please, can you watch me? Give me a hand, Mom. And it glitched out right in front of her. She was like, why did that do that? I said, see, something's not right. I thought it was me. After we tried a few times, and we called a, an old neighbor friend that still works for Social Security, or uh, unemployment, and she, um, she helped us confirm that we were answering the questions the right way, and then, bam! 
it brought me to this page telling me that, got to put my glasses on, my, your claim for the week of whatever has been entered for processing. So I'll be back to let you know if I qualified for traditional unemployment on top of the PUA. I'll be back. Have a good one. Bye.